first and last offers. We're now ready to start the negotiation. We've researched the other person, found the right negotiation environment, and have broken the ice by starting an enjoyable conversation. Are you ready? Here we go. When you negotiate, you should not expect to get everything you want. In fact, it will be rare when this happens. Instead, the person you're negotiating with will probably ask you for something in return, just partially give you what you want, or give you nothing at all. There are two important terms you need to understand to increase the chances of getting what you want. These two terms are your first offer and last offer. The first offer is what you initially tell the other person you want at the beginning of the negotiation. For example, Tiffany's first offer to Ryan is going to the Spark concert on Friday night and going to another pop concert Saturday night. It's not what she really wants though. Tiffany just wants to go to the Spark concert Friday night. Why would she begin with the first offer? Remember, it's very rare to get exactly what you want during a negotiation. Most of the time, the other person will only partially give you what you want. By making Ryan think she wants to go to two concerts, Tiffany is already prepared that Ryan will only partially give her what she wants. So instead of going to two concerts, Ryan might say he'll go to just one, which is exactly what she really wants. Also, if Tiffany agrees to just one concert, it shows Ryan that she respected him and gave concessions, which ultimately makes him feel good that he had control of the outcome. Tiffany also needs to know her last offer. Let's say she starts off with her first offer, but Ryan not only says no to Saturday night concert, but also is strongly objecting to the Friday night spark concert as well. What is the minimum Tiffany is willing to accept from Ryan? Well, even though Tiffany really wants to stay for the entire concert with him, she decides that the minimum she'll be willing to accept is going to the concert for a couple of hours with Ryan, then leaving early. It's not exactly what she wants, but she knows she'll still be satisfied being with Ryan listening to a few of her favorite songs. Tiffany's first and last offers allow her to be confident while negotiating and increase her chances of going to the concert with Ryan. That's because she gave thought to both of these things at the beginning of the negotiation. How are first and last offers related to entrepreneurship? It's important to go in prepared and just like research, determining your first and last offer is a great way to be prepared and improve your chances for success. First and last offers are very similar to Tiffany's situation. Let's say that you own a plumbing business and you've decided to buy a company truck that will be used to service your customers. You want to buy a high rated vehicle. However, since you're a business owner, you want to keep your costs low. After looking at your company's bank account, you determine you cannot afford more than $35,000 on a new truck. So 35 is your last offer, and you decide that $29,000 will be your first offer. However, as we just learned, we do not want to let the truck salesman know our last offer. We want to let him or her know the first offer. At the dealership, the salesman shows you the truck that you know is perfect for your business. He says the truck is priced around $32,000. Now is the moment you throw in your first offer to the salesperson. You tell the truck salesperson that your budget for a new truck is under $30,000. Since you've gone below the truck salesman's first offer of $32,000, the salesman will want to negotiate with you. As long as you stay below your last offer of $35,000, then you'll be successful. 